colored ferrules, expect to do some additional countersinking on the heads. See, the ferrules are precision pieces, but the countersinking done by the uh, foundries are not. So don't expect the lip to fit and have the, uh, the base of the ferrule seat flush with the top of the hosel each and every time. For this reason, I'm not an advocate of using them in any of my assemblies uh, because it requires extra work with no additional benefit. Now, counterboard ferrules are slightly different from a collared ferrule. Instead of a 20 degree angle that is produced from uh, standard countersinking to reduce stress at the top of the hosel, some manufacturers elect to create a recessed section for the first quarter inch or so of the inside diameter of the hosel. A special ferrule with a pronounced lip or step will actually seat down inside the recessed section of the uh, hosel to eliminate stress at the top of the hosel. I remember this used to be quite common to see junior components offered this way using the combination counterboard hosel and ferrule. But if you do a lot of repair, you'll see that a few Proline OEM uh, clubs, such as Callaway and TaylorMade, uh, util utilize this type of ferrule. On to the next ones. Um, we'll talk about reducer ferrules. Reducer ferrules are relatively new in the last decade. And these coincide with the decision of some of the name brand manufacturers to make club heads with larger hosel diameters. They are designed to serve double duty as they act as a normal ferrule, but they also have an extended lip that fits down inside the hosel to reduce the diameter. The objective is to be able to use standard size shafts into heads of clubs with an oversized hosel diameter. These are used exclusively for repair when reshafting a club and not for new club assembly. And these are also referred to as bushing ferrules. Replacement adapter ferrules are specific type ferrules used in repair and reshafting of Proline OEM models. Some of these ferrules will be exclusive to one make and model, such as a Ping G2 fairway wood or a Ping TISI titanium driver. Others might fit a particular brand, such as a model for Callaway that fits many different models within their line. Some of these specialty ferrules available by component suppliers will offer these to accept 335 shafts rather than 350 shafts that originally were offered in the OEM model. Therefore, these can also be considered reducer ferrules as well. If you do a lot of repair, I would suggest to have a couple of these uh, of each on hand. One, they're inexpensive, and your customer won't have to wait a long time for you to order the piece and then have it shipped to you. Also, some of these type heads I mentioned are fairly old, and the specialty ferrule, uh, ferrule may be hard to find, if not impossible to obtain. At some point in time, you may find that you're the only person in your local area they will be able to uh, repair these clubs correctly. Plus, they're cheap, too. OK. Switch pages here. OK, the last two ferrules uh, that I'm going to show you or talk about are not sold anymore. But you may experience them if you ever work with wooden woods or need to re-whip one. That's why at least I want to give them a mention so you'll know what they are. Once available in a variety of sizes to fit the different uh, tip diameters that may have been used, ferrules for wooden woods are intended to provide a, new, uh, a nice smooth transition for the string whipping from the shaft down along the hosel. Therefore, wooden wood ferrules must be filed or sanded down in diameter along their entire length provide this nice smooth taper over which the whipping will be wrapped. This requires a lot of work to make sure that there's not a step closest to the shaft in. Rather, the club maker actually has to feather it in. And that's too bad because none of you won't get the opportunity to just see how much skill is required to do this right. The shanked wood ferrule uh, 
uh, it's kind of like a bicycle with training wheels. Its purpose was similar to the regular conventional wood, uh, woodhead ferrules, and that's to provide a, a, a foundation for the string whipping. The only difference is that the shanked ferrules had a small ledge molded at the top uh, or the small end of the ferrule to provide a starting point for the whipping. Because, the small ledge, uh, because of this small ledge, all the filing or the sanding of a shank ferrule should be performed only on the bottom or large end uh, of the ferrule. The shank allows the first few wraps of whipping to be installed because it provides um, a, a place on which the whipping will rest. And this was favored by beginning club makers. Now we explained what a ferrule is and the different types. Let's move on to how to install them on a golf club. There are different methods of installing ferrules depending on who taught you. So instead of teaching you the hard way, I'm going to show you my preferred method, which utilizes a ferrule installation tool. There's basically four steps to installing a ferrule. Twist, tap, force, and drive. Installation of ferrule begins by twisting the ferrule over the shaft tip by hand with the small end of the ferrule first. At this point, the shaft tip should already be abraded approximately half the length of the ferrule. It may also help if some epoxy is on the shaft tip to, to lubricate and assist in twisting and sliding the ferrule into place and to secure it after the epoxy cures. In the case, uh, the case of taper tip shafts, this is a very simple procedure since the inside diameter of the ferrule is always larger than the tip end of the shaft. When working with taper tip iron shafts, the ferrules will glide up about three quarters of an inch without any resistance. Once the ferrule reaches this point, the club head uh, can be used to push the ferrule into its final place. You want to place the tip of the, the, the uh, um, you want to place the shaft tip in the club's hosel and just lightly tap the butt end of the club on the floor. And what this will do is force the ferrule up the shaft. And when the shaft bottoms out in the hosel, the ferrule be, will be installed in its proper place. But be careful not to dry the ferrule on all the way if you're going to be using uh, tip pins for swing weighting. Otherwise, you're going to dry the ferrule up too high. Installing the ferrules onto parallel tip shafts requires a little bit more work. That's because the parallel tip shafts often have one constant diameter for an extended length. The ferrules will be much more difficult to start over the tip and then push it up the shaft. In order to drive the ferrule into the, the final position, we'll require at least a quarter inch of the shaft to protrude out of the bottom of the ferrule before, uh, before ferrule installation. Generally, metal woods will slide onto the shaft easier than uh, parallel tip iron ferrules, thus not as much force will be required. To help allow ferrules to slide on easier, you might even try soaking them in some hot water uh, to help soften them and make them more potentially easier to install. But that's not a requirement. That's just a suggestion if you need some help there. If the ferrule doesn't twist on easily, you could just place the 